This presentation will provide you with an overview of the Welsh National Marine Plan. On the 12th of November 2019, the first Welsh National Marine Plan was published and adopted. Now the plan is in place, relevant public authorities must take account of it in their decision making under Section 58 of the Marine and Coastal Access Act. The Welsh Marine Plan area consists of around 32,000 kilometres of sea with 2,120 kilometres of coastline. This plan covers both the Welsh inshore region from mean high water spring tides out to 12 nautical miles and offshore region beyond 12 nautical miles in a single document. The plan introduction sets the scene and provides the context for marine planning. We produce another webinar that gives further detail on this. Then comes the plan vision and objectives. There are 25 general policies. These are overarching and cross-cutting and cover areas such as nature conservation, heritage, coastal communities and economic growth. Then the 17 sector specific policies which relate to the diverse types of activity that occur in Welsh seas. The policies are either safeguarding or supportive. The general and sector policies collectively support the sustainable development of Welsh seas in line with the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act and the Environment Wales Act. The effectiveness of the plan policies will be considered as part of the monitoring and reporting on the plan. The plan vision will be delivered through the plan's objectives, general cross-cutting policies and sector specific policies and objectives. Plan objectives describe the desired outcomes this plan is seeking to achieve, supporting the UK high level marine objectives and the ambition set out in the UK marine policy statement. In this way, this plan, as one of a suite of UK marine plans, will contribute to the delivery of our shared UK vision. Marine planning for Wales operates within the UK framework, but has a distinctive Welsh focus, reflecting devolved legislative context, responsibilities and priorities. So let's give an overview of this plan's policies and how to interpret them. The plan's policies are structured under a number of key themes. First come the general policies, which represent the marine planning system support, for sustainable development of the marine area through guiding proportionate and risk-based decision making. Secondly, there are the economic policies. The plan supports the development of the marine economy through policies that guide decision making in relation to marine sectors. Next are the social policies. These recognise that our seas are an intrinsic part of our history, economy and way of life. These policies relate to a range of social issues including coastal communities and heritage. Then the environmental policies. These promote the protection and enhancement of the marine environment to ensure that we have resilient marine ecosystems that can meet the needs of future generations. The fifth set of policies cover governance and include policies relating to the development and assessment of proposals and the means by which decisions are made and implemented. Finally, the science policy frames and guides all decisions to ensure a resilient marine economy, society and environment. Each plan policy has a code. For example, Gen 01 is general cross-cutting policy number one and thereafter. Unless otherwise stated, policies apply to both the inshore and offshore marine planning regions. Policies are supported by policy context and where appropriate maps. These maps show relevant information, including the distribution of activities and natural resources. The maps in the plan are illustrative only and the most up-to-date information will be on the marine planning portal. As you can see from this slide, there are six groupings of general cross-cutting policies and the number at the end indicates how many policies fall under those groupings. So let's look at the general cross-cutting policies in more detail. There are two general policies. These policies represent the marine planning system support for the sustainable development of the marine area in line with the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act and the Environment Wales Act through proportionate and risk-based decision making. The policies frame and guide all decisions to ensure a resilient marine economy, society, culture and environment. Relevant public authorities in making the decisions are encouraged to seek to maximise the contribution to the achievement of the seven well being goals for Wales and make the decisions in accordance with the sustainable development principle. There are two economic policies. These policies recognise that sustainable development of the marine environment has the potential to increase the prosperity and well-being of the people of Wales. The plan sets out how use of our marine resources should be managed in order to optimise the value, in a broad sense, of the marine area to the people of Wales while supporting social objectives and values. This plan supports coexistence of relevant activities by encouraging proposals to consider opportunities to bring together different but compatible activities to make best use of marine space and natural resources. There are 11 social policies. Our seas are an intrinsic part of our history, economy and way of life. For our coastal communities, the sea and its associated activities play a significant role in well-being, providing jobs and opportunities for recreation activities and supporting cultural diversity and a sense of heritage. These policies relate to a range of social issues, including access to the marine environment, the well-being of coastal communities, heritage, coastal change of flooding and climate change. There are seven environmental policies. These policies promote the protection and enhancement of the marine environment to ensure that we have resilient marine ecosystems that can meet the needs of future generations. The environment policies set out in this plan play a key role in delivering sustainable management of natural resources and support the achievement of good environmental status. The plan recognises the importance of a resilient marine ecosystem through policy ENV01. 
Under this policy, proposals should demonstrate how potential impacts on marine ecosystems have been taken into consideration and the policy aims to ensure ecosystems are maintained, restored where needed and enhanced where possible. Meanwhile, EMVO2 ensures appropriate consideration of the potential impacts of proposals on marine protected areas in order to maintain the integrity of MPAs within the marine plan area and ensure the overall coherence of the MPA network. On page 47 of the plan, there is a table that sets out the relationship between policies in the plan and the 11 descriptors that represent the key aspects of good environmental status. There are two governance policies. These relate to the development and assessment of proposals and the means by which decisions are made and implemented. Good governance is about creating and using the correct processes, for making and implementing decisions to deliver the best outcomes for society. In the marine planning context, this provides transparency in decision making. GOVA 1 aims to ensure appropriate consideration of cumulative effects across projects, developments and sectors, contributing to ecosystem resilience and ensuring compliance with the UK Marine Strategy and the Environment Wales Act. GOVA 2 sets out key documents which should be considered in the development of and decision making on proposals in order to ensure adequate integration with other planning regimes. Finally, the policy for science frames and guides all decisions with the aim to support plan-led sustainable development of the marine area through proportionate and risk-based decision making. Policy and management decisions should be underpinned by sound evidence. Developers, regulators and other users of the marine environment should make use of the best available evidence in developing their proposals and making decisions. The plan sector chapters provide policy for the future development and use of the marine plan area for certain sectors that use Welsh seas. These activities include aggregates, agriculture, defence, dredge and disposal, fisheries, renewable energy, oil and gas, ports and shipping, subsea cabling, surface wastewater and tourism and recreation. There are two types of policies for sectors, safeguarding and supporting. Safeguarding ensures sectors consider each other's needs and do not compromise areas of importance to particular sectors but encourages coexistence. Supporting policy encourages sustainable sector growth, recognising the need for forward planning through collaboration in order to identify future opportunities. For every sector, there is a sector objective and policy. This is an example of the aggregate sector. Sector objectives articulate the desired future state for that sector and provide context for sector policies. As with the general cross-cutting policies, the sector-specific policies are also coded. A wide range of activities occur in our seas and there is a potential for these to continue, grow and diversify in addition to new activities occurring. Established activities are important uses of the plan area which are safeguarded by policy in the plan. There are three safeguarding policies to protect current and future potential activity. Policy DEFA 1 safeguards defence interests and alongside this there are two common safeguarding policies, SAFO 1 and SAFO 2, which apply in relation to safeguarding all sectors other than defence. Defence and surface water and wastewater treatment and disposal are the only two sectors not to have sector supporting policy but are supported through a sector objective and safeguarding policy. The Marine Policy Statement recognises the need for the Ministry of Defence to maintain and deploy the operational capacity to provide defence and security to the UK. In recognition of the importance of ensuring that marine activities and developments do not adversely affect strategic defence interests, the plan sets a specific safeguarding policy. DEFA 1 applies to all proposals from all sectors with the potential to impact upon MOD activities. The management of surface water runoff and wastewater includes collection, transport, treatment and disposal. The plan recognises that the provision of and the effective management and maintenance of this infrastructure are key activities. So let's go into the remaining sectors in a little more detail. As set out in the plan, the aggregate sector involves the seabed extraction of aggregates, such as sand and gravels, for use as construction material for land reclamation or beach replenishment. It doesn't cover the removal of aggregates as the byproduct of another activity, its removal for a particular purpose outside of a license area or navigation related dredging. Aggregate supporting policy relates to proposals for new aggregate extraction and it encourages collaboration between public authorities in the sector to ensure sustainable development. Sector chapters are organised alphabetically. Following aggregates policy, the plan sets out aquaculture policy and reflects the Welsh Government's aim to support the development of sustainable aquaculture production and associated supply chains. Aquaculture policy relates to proposals for new aquaculture developments and encourages collaboration between public authorities in the sector to ensure sustainable development. Next comes dredging and disposal, which relates to activities involved in the removal of material from one area of the seabed and the relocation of the extricated material elsewhere for disposal. This policy relates to proposals that maintain navigable channels and long-term access to open at sea disposal sites for appropriate material. An important sector with potential for future growth is the energy low-carbon sector. This relates to various types of marine renewable energy generation, for example, the wind, wave and tidal resources and associated activity. 
Marine energy resources around Wales offer a good opportunity to deliver significant renewable energy generation, helping Wales move towards a low carbon economy. There are four policies relating to energy low carbon. These policies support the sustainable development of energy resources like wind, wave and tidal stream and encourage further consideration of prospects for the emerging tidal range sector. Next comes non-renewable energy policy. Responsibilities for oil and gas licensing, consenting and permitting in the plan area is divided between the UK and Welsh governments and the Oil and Gas Authority. Welsh Government is responsible for the oil and gas licensing for onshore areas and internal waters, which includes intertidal areas, estuaries and coastal inlets. Welsh Government's policy objective is to further avoid extraction and consumption of fossil fuels in those areas. Beyond these limits, the relevant licensing authority is the UK Oil and Gas Authority, and the plan therefore reflects UK government policy for this area. The plan also includes policy relating to long-term development of carbon capture and storage technology. The plan recognises that to ensure the long-term viability of the commercial fishing sector, fishing activity should be managed sustainably and not have an adverse effect on wider ecosystem resilience. The Welsh commercial sea fishing sector is a diverse industry with most activities occurring within six miles off the shore. The focus for most vessels is principally on crustacean and molluscan shellfish, but also on a range of fin fish. The commercial fishing sector is a key contributor to many rural coastal communities where employment opportunities can be limited. Welsh Government is committed to planning positively for the sustainable future of the commercial fishing sector. Fisheries policy rates proposals that support and enhance sustainable fishing activities and encourages collaboration between public authorities in the sector to ensure sustainable development. The ports and shipping sector covers the construction, operation and maintenance of ports, harbours and terminals and marinas to support commercial and ancillary activities. Supporting policy relates to proposals for ports, harbours and shipping activities, including proposals that provide for the maintenance, repair, development and diversification of port and harbour facilities, and encourages collaboration between public authorities in the sector to ensure sustainable development. In the plan, the subsea cabling sector includes the deployment, maintenance and decommissioning of subsea telecommunication and electricity transmission cables. The plan supports the development of an advanced broadband telecommunications infrastructure and promotes an integrated approach to the provision and renewal of energy and telecommunications infrastructure. Sector support and policy relates to proposals that facilitate the growth of digital communications networks and the optimal distribution of electricity. Finally, in terms of sector support and policy, tourism and recreation is a critical sector to the Welsh economy. In the plan, recreation means free time leisure activities largely undertaken in the local environment. Tourism means activities, services and infrastructure associated with visitors and holidaymakers. However, tourism activities can also be recreational in nature. 70% of the Welsh coastline is designated for its environmental quality. And in recent years, certain activities such as wildlife watching and visiting beaches has increased dramatically. A high proportion of Welsh seas have blue flag status. This sector is often a catalyst for wider economic and local regeneration activity. Tourism recreation policy relates to proposals that demonstrate a positive contribution to tourism and recreation opportunities and policy objectives around the Welsh coast and encourages collaboration between public authorities in the sector to ensure sustainable development. That concludes the presentation of the plan content. You can view further presentations on marine planning for Wales, including in relation to resource areas and strategic resource areas and the planning portal, plan implementation and monitoring reporting. And finally, this slide provides you with a high level overview of available resources to help you understand and apply the plan, as well as contact details for the team.